presenter, Gus Chikala, President and CEO of Project Assistance. Gus founded Project Assistance in 1996 with the goal of transforming our client's approach to project and portfolio management to achieve a standard of excellence in execution that consistently delivers expected project outcomes. A recognized project and portfolio management expert, Gus is a published author of many popular articles and books on the subject of project management, and he's frequently asked to present topics of interest around project and portfolio management. Gus? Thank you, Jane. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for being here. I'd like to start off uh, just with a brief review of our agenda for today. So uh, thanks for the introductions, Jan. The, uh, we'll, we'll start off with some of the challenges uh, surrounding this SharePoint platform. Uh, once we go through the challenges, we'll talk about some of the uh, SharePoint's potential and therefore the scoping considerations that come from that potential. Following that, we'll discuss a comprehensive approach to uh, utilizing and getting the most out of the SharePoint platform. And as Jan mentioned, we'll save questions and answers to the end. There'll be a question console you'll be able to fill in, and Jan will help me uh, gather those questions and answer as many as we can before our time is up for today. So the challenges, uh, you, you'll, you, I'm sure any of you who have been around uh, SharePoint for any period of time will recognize uh, at least some of these challenges. And the first one I wanted to address is, is really how, how broad the platform is. Uh, you know, if you say SharePoint and ask people to say the first word that comes to their mind, you'll, you'll get a lot of different answers. And, and uh, when you start bringing that, you know, that those various answers into a broad audience, like, like an entire organization, and say, you know, what do you expect SharePoint to do? You get a lot of differences between what the organization wants and what the organization needs. So SharePoint means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And uh, like, any, like anything that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, it can't satisfy all those needs. Certainly it can't satisfy all those needs at once. And, and so, you know, it's the, uh, you can't please all the people all the time. And SharePoint falls in, into that realm. So one of the real challenges is, you know, how do you, how do you get focus and definition to come out with a realistic set of requirements for what SharePoint can do? Now, when we get down into the scoping considerations, uh, for those of you who are new to SharePoint, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what, what we mean by being all things to all people. Today's presentation is not a deep dive. I, I know uh, we had some uh, questions that were answered in terms of what people would like to see. I can tell the uh, expectations that were that, that were uh, put out there probably won't meet those today, but certainly would be available to discuss them after today's meeting. So taming and optimizing a legitimate enterprise solution is, is always a challenge. And, and uh, for anybody, again, who's familiar with SharePoint, it's been around for a long time. It's been around for 10 years, and it's been through several releases. And as you can expect with any enterprise class solution, as those releases come along, many, many of the enhancements and features and patches that are put onto a technology like this really make it prime time ready for the enterprise. So once we get that enterprise readiness, there's a, a question of how do you really tame, tame this thing? How do, you, how do you really optimize and get the most out of it? And um, oftentimes, you know, there's a disconnect, right? There's high expectations, but there's no uh, really uh, support from an investment standpoint. There's inappropriate support. There's a misalignment um, for what people are really looking for. And, and many of the challenges that come with that misalignment is if we think about you know, the entire potential of, of a platform like SharePoint and all, all of its capabilities, uh, the vision of the future, a long-term vision of the future of what this can do for an organization can be very broad. And, and so back to the taming and optimizing, part of the taming and optimizing goes back to the focusing and defining realistic requirements. A low investment isn't a bad thing. Uh, uh, the misalignment with the future uh, direction is not a bad thing. The real question is, what's going to happen next? And, and is that investment aligned with, with, uh, with the prioritized list of what's going to happen? So we'll, we'll talk about that when we get into uh, a comprehensive approach, that, that part of the presentation. So the needs versus the wants is, is the first and, and one of the biggest challenges uh, we tend to run into. And for those, of, again, for, of you who have used this yourself and, and attempted to tame it, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. The next challenge I'd like to talk about is the lack of a portal strategy. Because of how big this solution can be, uh, because of the fact that it's not the first portal to exist, 
Uh, it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's the first one to come into the organization. The idea of having a centralized governance process becomes pretty important. And it becomes important because uh, there can be an unstructured proliferation of sites because of the ability to decentralize administration, to, uh, which can be a good thing, and, and, and we wouldn't discourage. But to do that with, with, with some kind of a portal strategy uh, can prevent some of the challenges of proliferation. And proliferation has many, many challenges. Some of the other challenges I'm about to talk about are really challenges created through proliferation. Uh, uh, so the multiple disconnected portal technologies, uh, SharePoint uh, isn't necessarily going to unify uh, a disconnected base of portal technologies that may have come through legacy, may have come through different divisions, different departments. And, and again, uh, taking a holistic view of what this technology solution can do for a business is going to help drive that, that understanding, that need, that there be that holistic view, that there be that strategy. Uh, so, you know, lacking uh, a portal strategy uh, implies some administrative processes that, that, that need to be addressed, that if there's not a strategy, oftentimes don't exist or evolve uh, in a haphazard way and therefore uh, helps foster some of these issues. So file site and server backup and restore procedures, oftentimes uh, there are assumptions that there's an organization centralized that's doing that. Um, it's not fair. Uh, to go proliferate sites and not tell a central IT organization what you're doing and then expect that they know where they are and they're being backed up. So that, that's uh, part of the challenge. Uh, the definition of the overall architecture, another part of the challenge. The, you know, the, it can be put across multiple servers. It can be in different geographies. Uh, these things can be connected, but, but oftentimes are not done optimally if, if that strategy doesn't exist. And uh, the whole directory structure uh, concept, that, that they have some standards for how directories get created and, and, and again, to the, to the proliferation idea of things, to, to provide some structure and some standards is going to help tame some of those potential issues. The next challenge I'd like to talk about is uh, really right down, right down line from this idea of proliferation. So the document landfill because SharePoint is, uh, one of the uses of SharePoint is, is, is to be a repository for documents, uh, it really can become a landfill. And for those of you who have, uh, you know, have migrated from file shares, uh, you, you know, SharePoint can be very similar to that, right? If, if, if we've had a file share mentality, a server, a file server mentality, where people can put whatever they want out there, um, at some point there's a, there can be a challenge in understanding the versions, how long it's been there, uh, is, is content uh, supposed to be archived? Are, are obsolete uh, files out there? Are, are, should things be expired? Should they, should they be getting uh, renewed? You know, think about, uh, for example, contracts, which, which in our business can be a challenge, or proposal templates. You know, what, what's our latest description of an offering? Um, all, all of those things can be challenging. So, and, and at the end of the day, you know, information overload, we, are, we all suffer from that to begin with, to have you know, information in a lot of different uh, places can, can really make it uh, uh, challenging to have a landfill like that. So difficulty sorting through massive amounts of, of uh, communication and to filter out what is relevant uh, is, isn't necessary if this, if this uh, technology is used appropriately. And the thing that, you know, the thing that really uh, is, is the good news and bad news of SharePoint is it's, is the way I like to describe it is that it's uh, elegant in its simplicity. I mean, it, it does some very important jobs uh, fairly easily. You know, people take to this thing. It's one of the fastest growing solution in Microsoft's history simply because people can take to it and use it fairly quickly. So, so uh, we have an obligation, those of us who are in charge of, of distributing these kinds of solutions have an obligation to help fight this, these, uh, some of these challenges that we're talking about today. So the difficulty in keeping track of relevant documents or searching for a specific document or, or content uh, happens when there's a proliferation of sites and then a proliferation of content within those sites. Uh, th there can be the same version in multiple sites and multiple directories. So you know, not knowing what the single source is for a definitive version of relevant materials uh, it can be pretty challenging. And you know, the, the real challenge, the, the upshot from this is is really a question about. Uh, confidence in the content itself. You know, if we go to the if we go to the repository 
and, and we find multiple versions, inconsistent versions, and at the end of the day, a lack of reliability, that's the way people will view the solution. It's not reliable. So, so preventing that document landfill is important. Uh, we, you know, suggest gatekeepers. We suggest roles for gatekeepers. And again, this idea of how how sites are proliferated, how they're how they're allowed to to, to, to be spawned, uh, is is a direct part of the portal strategy that can help tame some of these potential issues. Uh, there could be loss of content as well. You know, it's sort of the opposite of that. The the uh, the thing that's great about SharePoint is is you know, if we have uh, staff turnover, if we have if we have uh, uh, laptops with hard drives being replaced, all that kind of business, if we centralize some of this content, and and we do it in an appropriate way, we we, we can have this solution not only not be a landfill, but but to be a place we can reliably go to to find things that have, that, that that are organizational knowledge, things that we've known for a long time that we shouldn't forget, and to use this this technology as a strategy to help us uh, maintain that knowledge. The next challenge I wanted to talk about is uh, the whole concept of uh, inefficient information management. And a lot of this, uh, it, it's somewhat uh, analogous and similar to the previous slide that we talked about. But the uh, inefficient information management uh, does drive duplication of information. Um, yeah, disk storage is getting uh, inexpensive in some ways, but in some ways it's becoming more expensive depending on how how, how space is utilized within your organization. So space management can really get to be a problem. Uh, using disks, losing disks, uh, overfilling disks. Uh, we've certainly um, seen SharePoint, for example, being used to, uh, to try to prevent uh, email from going crazy. We, you know, we, we've gone into organizations where everybody's mailbox is 5 gigabytes or 10 gigabytes or, or, or 35 or 50 gigabytes. And, uh, oftentimes, there's a lot of duplication of information. So, one of the challenges really is how do we how do we get that information management to become efficient? And getting the right information to the right people. Uh, you know, certainly centralizing information can be a, a trust issue. Um, you know, if, if you are uh, on an executive management team and you have sensitive information like employee offer letters or uh, cost information for, uh, for, for vendors that are being hired or uh, legal information, you know, litigation information, uh, mergers and acquisitions, uh, uh, you know, the, the list goes on and on. So securing, establishing a control framework for new uh, for a new environment is is important, right? So there's there's an operational aspect to that, there's a people aspect to that, and there's an information side of that, and, and all of this really comes under the umbrella of getting the right information to the right people and making sure that there's confidence that the environment is secure. So we got to make sure only the right people have access to the specific information. Um, how do we distribute rights? How how are we confident that those rights are are accurate? How do we not make it too cumbersome? You know, if, if we, we've certainly seen where a definition of an audience can get pretty granular in terms of who's in and who's out uh, to certain libraries, to certain documents, to certain sections of documents, to the exploration of documents. Um, all of those things are um, are really important to making sure the right the right information gets to the right people. So when we have these challenges, what what what, what ends up happening is we start asking the question of well, well you know what should we tackle first? You know what, SharePoint does a lot of things. Uh, what are those things, and, and, and how do we scope this effort? So, so the next thing I really wanted to, 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 to think about is this idea of, of SharePoint's potential. Uh, I'm, I'm about to flash through some slides that will look familiar to, to many of you, but I think it's important to, to just think about, you know, what are all these things that SharePoint really is? And, and if it really is all these things, what does it mean to us? How, how do we tame this piece? How do we how do we make sure that if it gets out there, that it provides appropriate value? So what, what I'd like to do is just, is just break down the pieces on this slide here and, and, and take a few pieces of this puzzle out and just talk about it, uh, again, from a high-level standpoint of what is it that SharePoint really can do. And we hear this, you know, we hear this, this, this idea of collaboration. And uh, you see a definition there. You know, it really means to work together. 
And, and, and when I say, you know, SharePoint is elegant in its simplicity, certainly what it can do is drive collaboration is, is pretty powerful. So, so when we're working jointly in teams and, uh, and on, on, on a uh, collective intellectual endeavor, uh, this, this collaboration idea can be really helpful. Uh, we see it most commonly used in, uh, in project management, in, uh, in a broad range of document management, which can include, which project management oftentimes is included in that, and just portals in general, right? So to have people have a common place they can go to, to see uh, a list of contacts, to see a calendar, to see events that are coming up, to um, have access to certain information, whether it be documents or some of those other examples I just used, uh, it's really important that that, that collaboration uh, have, have a, a central theme. And we'll come back to that when we talk about strategy. So an example of collaboration, uh, uh, a, common, a common example that SharePoint is, is thought of, of using is, well, yeah, maybe we can we can use email to collaborate. A lot of people do document management through email where they, they send attachments around. And then when they look for the file, they go look for the attachment uh, to the email. But this idea of a, a workflow is uh, a very, very common uh, concept in this whole collaboration environment. So uh, simply what you see on the screen here is a screen capture from a native off-the-shelf, out-of-the-box workflow, which is really a document approval and feedback collection loop. And, and this is just one concept uh, that really just scratches the surface of what we mean by collaboration. Collaboration, uh, even from a workflow standpoint, within SharePoint can go pretty deep. It, it's, it's not atypical for us to have uh, a client approach us or a prospect approach us and say, you know, we think SharePoint's great. We want to do collaboration. We want to do workflows. How can SharePoint do that? And by the way, we'd like, we'd, you know, we'd like to do something fairly sophisticated. So, so not only do we have the, the collaboration, uh, the simple example we see on the screen here, but this whole idea of how do we enhance the workflow engine? How can we use the Windows Workflow Foundation to customize workflows and, and to have you know, a portal document sharing environment, which really helps us get the right information, collaborate with the teams, get it secured, lock it down, make sure we have the right version. All those things can be done when this technology is used appropriately. The next concept I wanted to talk about is really just the idea of a portal itself. So uh, again, in, in, in the scope of considerations, the idea here is that the broadness of SharePoint and all the different things it can do for people really, really uh, can present an identity crisis if we're not being careful about our definition. So what we see here is um, a lot of different ways that people think about portals. Right? Portals are RSS feeds. They, they, they should have site map directories. They, um, they can they, they offer the opportunity for consistent branding. They they can be um, on purpose separate sites for different audiences. We we can have uh, uh, different departments accessing different sites, so we can control the privacy of information. Uh, these even can be externally facing, and I'm sure if you some of you who are familiar with SharePoint would recognize when you get to a website that's been built on SharePoint. So uh, it, we can standardize an enterprise portal for site templates, so we can make things look consistent across the organization so people start to become familiar with how they want to access information. We start knowing where to look because there's a standard for how information is presented through the consistent interface as well as the standard enterprise uh, site portal. The whole idea of the my sites, right, to personalize things and, and to, get, to get things to people that are relevant to them. And then obviously the user profiles. So portals uh, oftentimes, uh, uh, we see SharePoint really more specifically from a portal standpoint being referred to as an intranet. So used internally in a lot of organizations to share information. We also hear the concept of uh, a DMZ. Uh, it's not atypical. Uh, when, when Jan was doing the introduction about our background as a company, we're called Project Assistance because our first introduction to SharePoint was really in the clever things that Microsoft did when they launched the first uh, true, true server product with, with Project, and that would be Project Server 2002, well, there was SharePoint as, as one of the Microsoft platforms, and it became pretty obvious that this would be uh, a way to allow uh, project teams to collaborate, and those project teams are not always internally facing. So it's possible to have a strategy to, uh, when we target our audiences, to not only have that just be the folks within our company. We, uh, we, we see, for example, pharmaceutical companies that have partners, like many, maybe clinical research organizations who are going to be 
providing clinical study reports back to the pharma? How can we collect those clinical study reports? How can they be secure? And how can we get these folks into our environment, but not so far into our environment, that they have access to everything within our domain? That they're not logging into our payroll system, that they're not going into other places in our system where they don't belong. So all these concepts come under the umbrella of portal. So even just this one slice of the pie is pretty extensive when you think about it. <clears throat> so what we see here is uh, just a quick example of a portal. Uh, in this case, you see the, uh, the navigation down both the, uh, the vertical sidebar and the horizontal top bar. Uh, we see some of the information in the middle of the page, some of the, uh, some of the, the, the uh, pieces of the website, the web parts. And just one simple example of uh, what a collaboration portal can look like. Again, for the folks that have done collaboration, you would be familiar with this idea of how we show maybe team assignments in one area, announcements in another, uh, a calendar links. And I'll, I'll get into some other examples when we get down to the dashboard level, when we think about really uh, using SharePoint to distribute information out beyond the simple example that I'm showing here. Uh, searching. Um, that's a big one. You know, uh, uh, SharePoint provides a search capability, so it's it's rich in its ability to search uh, for people and business data. Uh, you know, the, the sources, the scalability of sources can can be broad. I mean, when when we were first doing the project server work, you know, ten almost ten years ago, uh, there was this you know, Windows SharePoint services was 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 pretty popular. It was really a subset of the overall uh, SharePoint umbrella family. And, and uh, you know, it was oftentimes used as, as a one-off, if you will, in, in just, a, let's say, a department or a unit of a company. But as we started to see, you know, the proliferation of information, this idea of the enterprise uh, content and the scalability really became important. You know, how can we search across multiple sites? If we have a lot of content out there, we want to go broad and deep and be able to find everything so that we're not rebuilding uh, information, that we're not reinventing the mousetrap. So we can have uh, relevance within context and uh, obviously business data, people, profiles, all, all those kinds of things uh, are all part of, of the SharePoint technology umbrella. So, so we, you know, we, we've seen um, some fairly large engagements that are just about search, right? depending again on the size of the organization. This can be an entire initiative just under that one simple word. It's really not that simple when you start peeling back the layers. The next thing I wanted to, uh, to do is just show you just a quick example for those of you who haven't seen search and it should look familiar. Uh, you know, if you use Google, Yahoo, any of those things, it's, it's, it's uh, similar in kind in terms of uh, its ability to search content, to use keywords, and, and to then bring back uh, that content, in, in this case, inside the organization. Click on it, go right to it. Content management. So I, I, I said I said document management in a specific context uh, a couple slides ago, but really, you know, as, as an enhanced document library, and obviously your definition of document, we would go even broader and say files, right, or just information. So th this idea of, of, of how we control content to centralize the information, uh, to control the access, check in, check out, to, uh, to not have multiple people collaborating on documents unless that's what we want. Uh, the workflow, again, is part of uh, the example I showed earlier in terms of collaboration was really a subset of the document workflow that we were showing. So this idea of, of uh, sending things around for feedback, uh, getting approvals, getting signatures, understanding the disposition of different uh, statuses of documents within the organization. Uh, we can uh, think about new content types. So if you, know, if you think about traditional office you know, documents, XLS, PowerPoint, certainly th that definition is of content can go much broader. Uh, custom metadata. So, so when we search for information, if we're clever about how we, if we think about the end game, if we begin with the end of mind and say, okay, if we're going to have a content management system, how are we going to want to put that information in? How are we going to want to get that information out? That can help us then define what's what's the you know what's the information about the information? You know, what kind of metadata uh, are we going to want to gather about these documents? So as we bring them into the organization. We can be smart about tagging information the right way. So uh, something you know, a, a recent uh, initiative we had here was uh, going through some of the resumes. You know, when we bring on new talent or when we search through uh, past folks that have done some work for us, how can, how do we tag that? You know, if, if, if we want to know, uh, you know, 
who's on project server, and not only that, but maybe do they know administration versus development versus uh, configuration? Um, are they strong on theory? Are they strong on development? Are they strong on some other areas? So, you know, just just something as simple as a resume search can get a lot better if instead of researching something like Project Server or something like SharePoint, which might uh, give me a hundred resumes back, if I can get specific and say people who have worked for us in the past, people who we have a good feeling about, uh, folks that got high marks from our customers, um, years of service, all those things. I mean, these are all these are all metadata tags we can come up with, and we can then build views to come back and say, okay, now let's get a view that tells us, gives us that list. Give us the recent folks that did a great job to know something about something. Okay, we can get lists within the folder structure. Uh, certainly the security comes into play here. Uh, in, in the newer version of SharePoint, the idea of uh, collaborating, uh, having multiple people people collaborate uh, is, is, is part of this content management and is, an, and is a great enhancement. Uh, we can customize compliance. So how do, how do we retain documents? How do we force documents to expire? How do we uh, set auditing policies to go out and make sure the right documents are in the right places? And, and if new versions come out, that they're appropriately distributed out to the organization. Of course, the uh, enhanced authentication and authorization um, is, is all part of this, this entire family of uh, features and functions within content management. So here's a simple example. Um, of a document library, this could be um, many layers deep. Uh, when, when I when I use the example of file shares, uh, we oftentimes see document libraries set up like you would set up a, uh, a file directory structure. So folders within folders, um, hierarchies, and then of course the ability with uh, without going into all the features and functions here, the ability to uh, pull these documents down to you know control versions to put comments on them. Uh, all very important, and of course the searchability and the ability, the ability to create certain views based on that metadata. Uh, business intelligence. Uh, you know, Microsoft had a separate product uh, only a release ago called Productivity Point Server. Uh, so, so Microsoft's entrance to the game uh, was originally intended to be uh, an integration of two technologies, SharePoint. Was productivity point, but we now find that the productivity point uh, basic features and functions as part of SharePoint uh, 2010. So um, dashboards, key performance indicators, yeah, that was all there. Uh, the ability to mine data from multiple sources, uh, the ability to uh, use, uh, for example, uh, Office Web Components on the front end. So we can have uh, uh, pivot tables that, that allow us to interact with the data. Um, OLAP data coming out of back-end SQL Server databases. Um, uh, other other places where information is stored, uh, you know, going going out to SQL, going out to other applications, bringing all that information together. Uh, SharePoint really becomes that business intelligence presentation layer, as well as the access layer. And so, being able to 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 to, to add intelligence, right? The, the whole I and the BI. Uh, acronym really gives us that ability to, to add knowledge to information to, to be able to make decisions from that. So again, a simple example in this case uh, showing uh, uh, some grid type information on the top, some, some uh, bars, uh, graphical information if you will on the bottom, in this case showing revenue and expense over time. Some very simple examples. Uh, these, as I mentioned, these can be pivot tables. The one on the bottom is a data analysis view that has not only a graphical component, but, but also has a spreadsheet component. Uh, we can interact with these things uh, given, given again, the appropriate administrative privileges. We can uh, set queries. We, we, we can refresh the data. We can export them out to Excel. All, all these things are are, uh, are possible. And and again, you know, these, these possibilities uh, are our friend and, and, and to be our enemy if we're not careful about how we how we take this technology and, and how we bring it in and, and, and really properly manage expectations. And so this next list I'm about to put up here is um, these general services. You know, this, this thing's a platform, right? It's an enterprise platform. So, so the, the, this final list really kind of brings together, you know, when we look at all those puzzle pieces that we looked at at the very front of, of the presentation, I'm sorry, at the very front of this section, Okay, again, back to the point is, you know, what can SharePoint do for you? Well, it can do an awful lot. 
Right. So, so the the introduction to this section of the presentation was scoping considerations. What can SharePoint do? Now, now the question is, so so now what? If, if SharePoint really can do all these things, and there's a broad audience out there that potentially wants to do uh, some or all of these things, how do we sort it out? Where do we go with this? So if I if I then now think about you know a comprehensive approach, where would I go with it? And you know, it's it's not surprisingly based on a, on a vision, right? So so it's a vision backed by plans, and and that's really what we want to uh, spend the next couple of minutes talking about. So in, you know, in our world, uh, you know, from a consultative standpoint, um, you know, it's it's not uncommon for us to get a call or or, or to run into a client or prospect and, and and have the question be, can you implement this for us? And and um, you know, we have a tendency to tap the brakes and, and, and talk first a little bit about is there a plan, right? So, so even even the words comprehensive approach or scope of considerations imply something that happens before we just say let's implement something, right? There's there's a thinking part of this that says we're dealing with technology, we're dealing with process, we're dealing with people spread across an organization. You know, what what is the vision for this thing? And 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 again, this you know these this, the, the, these requirements that can be very broad, and 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 these these expectations that can be very high. When we've got broad requirements and high expectations, it's it's a pretty good idea to understand, you know, what what really is the, the vision here? Who's the audience? What's the future state? You know, how are sites going to be, be created and managed? What's the architecture going to be? Um, you know, is there going to be a consolidation of portals and other technologies? How are we going to define access? Um, you know, we, we've certainly seen where the first couple of implementations of the first few sites that go out there with SharePoint can happen um, without a lot of chaos. Right? We had we had the term chaos in our in our title because you know the, the, this whole concept is uh, documents, portals, and dashboards using SharePoint technology to bring order from chaos, and 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 the chaos really happens when when this step is skipped or when it, we try to do it retroactively. You know, we get to that nth site, whether it's the third, the fifth, the seventh, whether it's the second department, the fourth department, the twentieth department, there's a point where without, for example, a, a really great way to um, to spawn access privileges through the many different sites, things can get pretty gummed up pretty quickly. And and to back out of that from an already implemented technology base can can, can be pretty challenging. It's it's hard to just sort of Stop the merry-go-round and get everybody off, and then put them back on in an orderly fashion. So, so we, we see this as a, as, a, as a really key point. Um, again, for a simple piece of technology, uh, you know what's fighting this is is the, the ease of use. You know, yeah, we can get in for uh, a fairly small investment in the technology. Uh, we can get in for a fairly small investment in terms of the services or, or the people skills um, that that have to uh, to do this to try it, and. Uh, so you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort uh, before these things can really start to pile on top of one another. So, so that, that's a that's a, a big part of it. This idea of uh, really having a strategy, having a plan, and uh, so what, what what it says in that last bullet there, this idea of a tactical plan and charter, uh, we use that we use that term somewhat interchangeably with uh, scope document. Uh, it can be used uh, uh, also as a business plan, depending on on uh, the terminology within your organization. As a matter of fact, if you ask one, us for one, we, we might even call it a statement of work. So uh, the terminology is not quite as important as the content. What's the content? Well, the content is an approach, uh, hopefully prefaced by objectives. So what is the objective? What's the vision? Why are we doing this? And make those objectives measurable. Can we really measure what success looks like when we're done? What's the approach to meeting that? So what are the tasks? A plan really has a, a a set of activities, right? So what are the activities? What are the deliverables out of that activity? How long is it going to take? Who's going to be involved? What's the investment? Okay. Now we do come at this as, a, you know, originally a project management consulting company, so for us this is pretty obvious, right? It's, it's the project plan for how you're going to use the SharePoint technology. So it's a project. Uh, on the heels of that comes your, you know, your, your traditional um, Technology implementation methodologies, and there's there's a, a little bit of a hybrid here. If, if you read down these these actions, uh, requirements can apply to off-the-shelf 
configuration of technology, but it can also apply to uh, custom development. Same is true for specs. You know, we, we can have configuration specifications, which are specific to what SharePoint does out of the box, or we can have specifications to say we're going to mine data from three different systems and we're going to build dashboards. We can say we're going to have custom workflows. So there's, there's a variety of things that we can that we can look at here. And again, these expectations can get out of hand if we're not careful about what that initial plan looks like. If the organization wants to use off-the-shelf, out-of-the-box considerations, then by definition we're going to limit those dashboards, we're going to limit those workflows, and we want to be upfront about them. We want to be very communicative about that. So the requirements and specs uh, most often are, are split into those categories. What's off the shelf, what's not, what's custom for real, what's real development versus developing the configurations. The installation, configuration, implementation, training, and rollout, all these things are key activities. In small SharePoint implementations, they can be fairly short. In larger SharePoint implementations, if well thought out, if the audience is broad, probably need a lot more thinking. And then the third column in the three-phase approach is this whole idea of how, how do we get this thing adopted and supported. So, so the, the coaching and mentoring for the team members, um, for an organization, probably even the folks that are in charge of the strategy, that are in charge of the centralized portal architecture, um, also would require this. The adoption and the audit. And audit means a lot of different things. You know, if, it, if, it's, if it's a dashboard uh, that's supposed to present information about how people uh, in our world, for example, are managing projects, uh, that would be uh, a point of audit, right? Are, are, are the investments we're making in the portfolio the right investments? Now, those, those same questions can be asked of any portfolio. It's not necessarily a portfolio of projects, but if we're talking about, for example, a, uh, a business scorecard, right? If, if, if there's certain information in that scorecard, that, that, that's providing the vital signs of the organization, how, what's the process to drive that information? Is the information accurate? Right? Are, are there multiple versions of information? Are there systems that have different versions of the same information? All right, so we thought we could get one answer, but we're getting two. The sales system says one thing and the financial system says something else for the same customer. Why is that? Okay, uh, The delegation of administration. Um, also also requires uh, adoption and support. How do we, if we're going to spawn sites out to a broader audience, how do we support those audiences and make sure they know what they're doing, that they know which rules to follow, that they understand the best way uh, to really make this of value to the organization. Uh, reporting and escalation from a central standpoint, um, oftentimes this has to do with the administration of standards um, in a specific instance like a uh, like a digital, um, I'm sorry, an executive scorecard. Certainly, the reporting and escalation would be part of that, right? So, if if, if we if we're implementing a, a system that's providing vital signs, of ROI, um, other other uh, you know red light, green light, yellow light types of indicators, um, if things aren't going well, uh, oftentimes the, adopt, the adoption support component of the solution is really about change management. How do we drive the changes? So, you know, in, in our world. Um, a lot of the upfront, the phase one stuff is done in broader, broader um, implementations where it's known it's going to be a wide implementation. Some, unfortunately, sometimes they're done painfully in a retroactive environment. Uh, the middle part, uh, oftentimes, you know, we are seeing these things most often around uh, providing information in dashboards. We're seeing it around uh, uh, the centralized management of documents, especially in the farmer world, of, uh, especially in the smaller farmers where uh, getting off of a a file share and getting on to some place where things can really be better controlled and we're a little more comfortable telling the FDA we have control over patient information coming out of trials. Uh, that that's an important place or any any other kind of a regulated environment. It can be it can be Starbucks, it can be an IT department that's just got to be able to to, to tell its business lines uh, how it's spending money. So so these are all examples of, of different ways we see this information being utilized. So the next thing I want to talk about is just how this breaks down into, 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 into some offerings, right, into some specific sets of activities. So if there is a plan for SharePoint, what, what, what does that look like? You know, so if we're going to build a strategy for portal organization and structure, what is it that we need, you know, what, what would be within the scope of a plan like that? So, so we want to really think about, you know, what are those high-level business requirements? What are the technical specs? 
for how we're going to really bring this technology out, out, out to the world, out to the organization. So, you know, within the scope of these uh, deployment plannings and strategies is this whole idea of how site creation and management occurs, how we're going to define and grant access privileges, how we're going to consolidate non-standard portal technology, site server backup, definition of architecture and directory structures. All these, all these uh, things are important and, and unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes the way we see this is not done well is by seeing the symptoms of the problems that are caused by not doing this. So it's almost one of those things that unless, unless you've been burned by it, it's uh, a little bit hard to understand how important it is. The installation and configuration, uh, certainly getting this information into a uh, into a into the right uh, architecture is very important. Um, a lot of these a lot of these um, engagements that we see have short fuses on them, right? So there's a desire to do um, the rapid and accurate installation of the technology. We, you know, we've decided we're going to do it. We've got licenses for it. We've got to get it up and running. We've got a specific need. Let's get going, right? So so a deployment plan. Uh, it's put together, it's executed to, uh, to, to make sure that the configuration is proper in the right target environment to the exact specs. And, you know, that's, that's really um, the installed configuration. It's really a summary of what you saw already on slide 26, right? So some of those, some of those uh, activities we see around requirements and the install and configuration would really come out of, of that kind of a uh, implementation. Uh, the other part of that, the other, the other ones I mentioned, uh, around this idea of specs and development and testing would really be uh, another another class of offerings or another section, if you will, of the plan that really talks to some of the custom application development. Right? So those services that extend SharePoint to address uh, business and technical requirements, they really aren't, aren't, aren't handled out of the box. And uh, as you probably already know, when you're dealing with the Microsoft technology platform, you know, you're in the .NET uh, environment. So you're you know, you're in this you're in this uh, industry standard development environment where we can now use uh, a set of tools to enhance SharePoint uh, to deliver this this functionality to meet exact requirements. So so without getting into the alphabet soup of the Microsoft development environment, yeah, we can use you know Windows Workflow Foundation. We can use the .NET fr the framework and, and, and all the all the all the relevant pieces and components that, that sit within that family. The integration. So, so how do we now, uh, you know, bring this information together? So, it wouldn't be uncommon for us to see SharePoint, you know, in a vision, in a complete vision. It wouldn't at all be uncommon to say that. Well, when we look back on, for example, slide 13, there's going to be multiple pieces here that are going to get installed. And by the way, some of these pieces are talking to each other. Some of the content's going to show up in the portal. Some of the collaboration is going to be about the business intelligence that we get out here. So these, you know, these pie pieces aren't necessarily intended to say they're separate features and functions. It's to say that we've seen deployments where the sole purpose of the deployment is for BI. The sole purpose of the deployment is just to get content management going. But in a in a in a broader deployment, it, it certainly wouldn't be uncommon for there to be more of an, uh, an integrated approach, right? So so the idea of Getting a portal that, that creates information awareness through through the integration that provides flexibility of information management that provides an, uh, enhanced use availability of data from a from a diverse set of systems. So that's 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 the flyby. The, the last one uh, or the last two I really wanted to talk about are really some of the some of the you know how do you get this thing going right the the idea of the end users being trained. And, and the idea of, of really having the um, the folks that are going to support this thing know how to do it. Uh, SharePoint uh, is unique, and therefore there are some unique things that the end users need to know. There are, there are of course, maybe specific customizations that would have to be taught and, and trained on. Uh, there's also, from a technical standpoint, uh, obviously the architecture can vary quite a bit. Uh, we see a lot of virtualization these days. Uh, of, of SharePoint environments being part of a, a greater whole. Uh, that, that technology has matured enough, certainly Microsoft's ability to embrace and, and support that has gone quite a far away. So uh, there's, there's oftentimes some training to the technical uh, team, uh, often a small audience, and uh, even to the point where if there is some specific web parts, 
deployment, search configuration, even customization, that would also be part of what, what's shared with the technical team. And then, you know, to bring it all together, we typically have this idea of, well, what, you know, what, what can this thing tell me? So, uh, again, not every SharePoint deployment has dashboards, but for those that do, we can really get some pretty compelling up to the minute business, business intelligence presented in, in a great way. Uh, we see a lot of uh, custom here. Uh, there's, there's some great out of the off the shelf stuff, some great out of the box stuff, but the reality is people who look at dashboards uh, are, are, are typically pretty senior. Uh, they, have, they, have, they, they have time crunches. They want information presented in a very specific way, uh, very specific to their process, to be efficient, and to get quick answers. So because of that requirement, uh, we often see these customer metrics, uh, this integrated financial data, this, you know, this performance against business goals, uh, scorecards, if you will, uh, being presented in some pretty specific formats. And you know, the platform's there and it supports that. So in terms of where we go from here at the 51 minute mark, I just wanted to spend a moment talking about next steps. And, and the first thing I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, Jay introduced uh, project assistance in the beginning. Certainly, you know, what we bring to the organization is, is you know, we help people uh, get their strategy implemented through flawless execution. So typically we are in a project intensive environment. And in project intensive environments, there's a desire to reduce risk. There's a desire to maximize ROI, usually fast, usually faster than uh, organizations can do it. Uh, there's a, a desire for, for value, again, rapidly to, to, to get there quickly and to drive uh, organizational change. So, you know, these are some pretty big challenges. I mean, it's really been our job to walk in and listen to people say, we're unique, we're fast, we've got to be different. It's got to, you know, we're looking for results yesterday. We can only spend a little bit of money. So it's, it's really... It's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to really provide innovative ways to make that happen, to, to really make sure it happens right the first time, and, and, and that those approaches really do reduce risk, maximize ROI, speed the realization of value. And at the end of the day, a term I use a lot is to create a continued move towards investment. It would be uncommon, it happens, but it's uncommon for the first investment that's put aside for these kinds of initiatives to be big enough to address all the various things we just talked about. Right, so so what really becomes important is that, is that something gets bitten off and it provides value. It's uh, you know that the risk isn't ridiculous and, and, and that people are comfortable and get something worth doing so that the next step can be taken. Um, our practices are around uh, project and portfolio management services, which Jan talked about. The collaboration, obviously, on SharePoint is, is a big part of that, and uh, we do a lot of uh, SharePoint only engagement. That's that's become a big part of our business. Uh, the education and competency dependent on the development, the deployment, all the training. Um, application development, again, most often it's around these collaboration platforms. It's around these project management platforms. Uh, project managers we supply, as well as uh, what we call platinum staffing. So we, do, we also provide business analysts, uh, solution architects, DBAs, those, those types. And, uh, and then project commander, which is a product that's been around for a long time, which uses the use of Microsoft Project. So the next steps, if you're interested in, uh, in a review of your organization, uh, we're happy to come in and do that for you. Uh, there's a no charge half day. Uh, I'm not going to read all this to you. These slides are available. Uh, there, there will be uh, a video that's captured. And uh, there'll be probably, I'm sorry, Jan's trying to say something to me. They'll be on the website tomorrow. They'll be on the website tomorrow. Okay, and that'll be a PDF file? No, they'll be able to download a recording. Oh, you're talking about the recording. Okay, so yeah. we're recording today's uh, session. So if there's somebody who couldn't make it, uh, you can go to the website. You can grab a link. You can send it to them. You can review it yourself. So it'll be a Windows Media file, and it should be out there shortly. Uh, if you want, uh, you want this played back for an audience within your organization, certainly let us know, and uh, we're happy to do that. So we are uh, about 54 minutes into a 60-minute presentation. So instead of five minutes of Q&A, Jan, is it okay if we do six minutes of Q&A in case we get some, some questions? Six minutes are good. Okay, so the console is open. Now, do you, Jan, do you want to just remind folks how they can put the questions in? Sure. You just enter them right into the question and answer console, um, and I'll see them right away, and I'll pass them on to Gus. Right. So if I go back to something like maybe slide three. So to submit a question, you'll see there's a question and answer button. 
uh, in your GoToWebinar console. And at the bottom, you can see questions and answers. Uh, you can enter a question. And um, if I can, I'll answer it live right now. And so are you looking at the console, Jen? I'm going to go to slide 39. OK, Gus, we have received a few questions already, so I'll just start with the first one, if that's OK. OK. How do we typically see SharePoint and Microsoft Project used together for process development and management? So Project and SharePoint used together for process development. OK, process development and management. OK, so not doing project management, but doing process development and management. Um, OK, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, most often what we see, if I hear the words Microsoft Project and Process, what, 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 I, what I see happening is uh, people using project plans as to-do lists. And to-do lists uh, cross a line into procedures, typically. You know, if we're trying to make sure that every step in a process happens, we're probably overburdening uh, the project plan. And a project uh, task takes on a life of its own. It's almost like um, it has a life, it's almost like caring for somebody through their life. They have a life cycle. They want to be updated. They want to be baseline. They want to have actuals. They have variances. And they cause a lot of, by the way, they may have resources assigned. And so to do that at, at, at a to-do list uh, level detail, uh, a, a step process, if you will, uh, what that does is it weighs down the plan. So what we see happening is we could have a, a task that describes a process, and then the process itself could be over over at SharePoint. So. So it's really good for that, and I, I would I would even uh, take that out of the, even the project management realm. Anything that looks like uh, a list of things that needs to get done certainly can be put into a procedure. And uh, you know, when we see certainly less and less procedures happening in binders, and more and more procedures happening through portals. So certainly SharePoint is a, uh, a great way to bring that process together uh, to control the versions uh, when they're updated to send them out there to lock them down, to expire them if they're old. You know, use, use tax procedure, for example. If you're a, if you're a you know, financial accounting department and, and last year's procedures are obsolete, we can make them go away. We can make it, you know, we, meaning SharePoint, can make it hard for people to, re to reference old procedures. So awful lot you can do there. Good question. And we have another one. You talked about a centralized governance around sites, et cetera. Are there tools within SharePoint to do this? Uh, yes, there are there are tools within SharePoint to do that, and uh, uh, you know some of the tools are uh, security-based tools. Uh, so so certainly the idea of how we uh, take security and we uh, proliferate that security. There's um, uh, <laughs> unfortunately we we oftentimes see this from the other end when those tools aren't used. So there are um, some of the governance tools are actually tools that you would use for governing. For example, a, um, a domain. So uh, the security for SharePoint, for example, first starts with the security for the domain. So we have seen uh, some challenges in, in, in using some of those tools and, and setting up uh, the right environment for those tools to be used. There's also uh, the ability for governance for templates. So setting up the templates is, is, is a very common exercise, um, setting up uh, how many how, how many layers they can go, uh, what they look like, what the branding is, and and uh, many many other examples I, I can lock into. Um, if there is uh, an interest in learning more about that, I, I will uh, admit that there is a limit to my knowledge from a systems engineering standpoint, and certainly others on our team who can help go deeper. So for the person who asked that question, I, w I won't call out your name. Um, but uh, we can see who you are, and, and certainly we'll we'll make a note to follow up with you to see if there's uh, some more questions that uh, you would like to have had answered. Okay, I have one more question for you, Gus. Um, what are the major differences between SharePoint 2007 and SharePoint 2010? Wow, major differences. Okay. Um, Did we have a slide for that, or is that the one? We do, we can just reference our list, right? Okay. Um, well, there's uh, certainly there, there's always there's always enhancements. Uh, when I mentioned the enterprise level, there's a lot of enhancements. So um, the kinds of things that collaboration is thought of in the internet world today, th there have been a lot of enhancements there in terms of blogs and wikis and discussions and social tagging. 
grading, bookmarking, um, a lot of that kind of thing. Um, the, the development platform is, is enhanced typically. So, uh, for example, Visio and, and Access as web applications have been brought in. Um, there's been an extension of web browsers, which to me, honestly, was a little bit of a surprise, but there are uh, some additional options there. Uh, the UI is a little bit different. Um, there's, a, uh, there's an office uh, ribbon style for those of you who like it. That's great. For those of you who don't, I apologize. I can tell you from a, uh, a, a longstanding user of Microsoft Project, we have found the ribbon to be helpful in, in that metaphor. Um, so there's, there's some more site editing. There's, um, there's, there's better collaboration on documents. We, we have a customer who's uh, thinking about going away from their current document sharing, their, their uh, 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 what, what am I trying to say? Uh, simultaneous collaboration on documents is, is, is another one. Just uh, looking at a list here. Searching is better. Um, there's some visual upgrades. There's some better list, list uh, linking to Visual Studio. And for the person to ask that question, if you want um, a list, we can certainly share that with you. Uh, it's, it's not hard to find uh, in the Microsoft world, but certainly if, if there's something we can do to get that in your hands, we would be happy to do that. OK, it is 4 o'clock, so uh, there are no further questions on the console. OK, great. Uh, three good questions. Thanks for your time, for your participation. Uh, if you're one of the folks that, that submitted questions to go deeper, uh, please feel free to follow up with us, and we're happy to take it deeper. Thank you all, and have a good day.